Our book today in the Tom Hartman Book Club is Stand Up, Struggle Forward by Sanyika Shakur. Um, this is a book that was written back in the late 90s, but it's still very, very timely. This is from the second chapter titled Class Antagonisms Inside the Fundamental Contradiction of National Oppression. Having just passed the 19th and quickly approaching the 20th anniversary of the L.A. Rebellion, we should be reminded here of what Rodney King whimpered as he stood in front of a bank of microphones surrounded by class enemies and neo-colonial politicians. We should remember how he'd been dressed in that non-threatening cardigan sweater, white shirt, and black tie. How his hair had been tortured into submission by a jerry curl. We should reflect as well upon how timid and spooked he looked, and on how concerned and stern those who flanked him were as well. That was a Kodak moment. It was staged to foster an image of contrition and resignation, submission, a victim. Rodney King had been led to believe through a bourgeois sense of reasoning that the rebellion was really about him, that the reason new Africans and Mexicanos took to the streets of South Central was the result of his filmed beating. That, of course, is typical of mechanical bourgeois thinking. What it's not typical of, however, is someone from the hood. And this cuts both ways. No one in the hoods and barrios ever thought it was about Rodney King. We'd all seen the film over and over like everyone else, but that was par for the course. We'd always seen that, long before anybody caught it on tape. Actually, we'd experienced much more than that. Why, it's safe to say that the hoods had gone to war with each other in vicious waves of internal, intra-class combat for much less than that, though because of a general colonial mentality which prevents the challenging of bottom-up oppression, the same hood forces will not, in any systemic way, wage war on the pigs or for freedom, land, and socialism. Rodney King alone and of his own accord would not have thought to hold a press conference to ask the asinine question um, in the form of a whimpering request, can't we just all get along? The fact of the matter is we are getting along. New Africans and Mexicanos are getting along just fine. What we couldn't understand was why he was admonishing us for getting uh, at the exploiters of our communities. The impression he gave with his handler's hands up, up his back like a ventriloquist troll was that a race riot was going on, as if we had all begun to kill each other or burn and rob each other's homes. His handlers compelled him to send up a false flag, a diversion. But you see, this was the very thing that exposed the class interests and reactionary politics of the Uncle Toms that had been designated to handle him and, by extension, us. Let's go back for a minute. Let's talk social development, a.k.a. history. There exists a fundamental contradiction in our lives that, like an elephant in the room, no one wants to acknowledge. As a consequence of the war waged upon various African nations by European powers, those of us captured and kidnapped were taken out of our own self-determining social developments and violently forced into Euro-American history. This is not simply a clever play on words. This is a reality. We lost the ability to control our own destiny. Read that again. From that time until now, the fundamental basic contradiction between the U.S. oppressor nation and our own oppressed and colonized nation has been the governing imperialist relationship, which is to say, us not being in control of the qualitative factors that determine our lives as a people, as a nation. Our tradition of struggle against this fundamental contradiction has taken many forms, some hidden or obscured, some open and hostile. But all of these is, have been open to resolve the fundamental contradiction and to regain our independence. While there have been some bona fide struggles to resolve the contradiction, there have also been reactionary neo-colonial struggles waged by internal enemies loyal to the oppressor nation and culture that have tried time and time again to subvert and control our destiny for the benefit of the capitalists. They've come among us, always imposed from above, stirring up emotions and giving lip service to progress, equality, justice, and prosperity. These always within the colonial confines of the oppressor's arrangements, and none collectively ever materialize, because without a resolution of the fundamental contradiction, that is the freeing of our productive forces from U.S. imperialism and the governing of our own affairs, we'll remain a minority within the American system as opposed to a majority in our own and subjected to the established bourgeois social contact, contract, i.e. colonialism, neo and post. We can parade all through the empire with black congressmen, black mayors, black governors, black police chiefs, black Supreme Court justices, hell, even a black president, and absolutely nothing will alter the genocidal relationship that governs our national oppression here because the blacks are part of the colonial apparatus. 
They have made a strategic alliance with the capitalist imperialists to act as go-betweens in our oppression and exploitation. This is a conscious class stand. The black petty bourgeois is not innocently confused, like say Mrs. Jackson across the street is, about our national oppression, about the existence and subjugation, subju sub subjugation of new Africa. They are well-read, have traveled in our experience. They've just chosen sides against us and in favor of our historical enemies. And the sooner we recognize and internalize this, the better off we'll be. We'll be. Black ain't nothing but a color. As a designation of our national identity, it has played out. It is a superficial understanding at best and a foolish and dangerous analysis at worst. We have no collective control over the qualitative factors which determine our lives. We do not, in other words, control our destiny, not as a people or a state. The book is Stand Up, Struggle Forward by Sanika Shakur.